If you need help, all you have to do is ask. And this, dear player, is the place to do exactly that. Choose this horse and carriage after you have chosen your destination from either your notebook or the directory. It will take you where you want to go. When you believe you have directed Holmes to all of the right and proper places, and you have enough information to name the murderer and the motive, choose this icon. The Baker Street Irregulars are an untidy bunch of young street boys who happen to be on the proper side of the law. They have an undeniable knack for bringing back priceless bits of information in a fraction of the time it would take Holmes or myself. When you want to summons them, first choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose the Irregulars. In no time at all, they will return with whatever details they were able to unearth. Choosing this icon puts a notebook at your fingertips. I believe you'll find that your notebook is your greatest detective tool. Use it to keep track of names and places that you believe you might want to investigate. When you do decide upon a person to question or a place to research, first go to your notebook, choose the appropriate name, then choose the horse and carriage. You will be off and running. Because the Baker Street regulars are often critical to solving a case, I've included them in your notebook. Use them wisely. This gives you access to the London Directory. In it, you will find everyone you need to query in your attempt to solve these cases. The directory is also the source for your notebook. Simply choose a name or place in the directory and drag it over into your notebook for easy reference. You may also use the directory much like your notebook. First, choose your intended destination, then choose the horse and carriage, and you'll have another way to get from one place to the next. Mr. Holmes' files provide a wealth of information that he has been collecting over the years. Some of it is quite pertinent to the various cases and some of it offers simply a fascinating and informative sidelight. When you want to access the files, first choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose here when you want to see what relevant information Holmes might already have at hand. Body found in the Thames, read it in the Times. Holmes has always claimed that the newspaper is a treasure of information when one can read between the lines. When you are ready to consult the Times, you may of course have a look at your paper copy or simply choose here for a close-up view. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. But thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They too will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's afoot. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. 
Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Jolly good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the great London Library. It is a wealth of information. What rubbish! What bored airs! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah, you must be referring to the affair of the mummy's curse. Has the entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm surprised you haven't taken some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. Because, I dare say, I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap. Well, Holmes, I did speak to the gentleman, but he was baffled as to why I had come. It seems as though he had absolutely no information pertaining to this case. Terribly sorry. It seems you need to turn up a clue or so more before the case can be judged. Please do continue. What rubbish! I know only a very little about two of the unfortunate gentlemen. I do recall that Turnbull was quite an eccentric chap. I don't believe he ever married, nor did he take his rightful place in London society. And what of Windybank? A quiet academic sort, as far as I can tell, married to a woman called Hildegard. There was one spot of controversy that I can recall. It seems a few years back he had a run-in with the Anti-Vivisectionist League. No, oh, but of course. It seems that during a lecture on the advancement of science, he spoke of the autopsy of his own pet. A recently deceased Yorkshire Terrier. Well, I can tell you the Times received a great deal of letters to the editor condemning him on that one. <laughs> Even one from a Louise Fenwick who threatened to vivisect him. Oh dear. Well, then I surmise it's Weatherby you know nothing about. Well, now that you mention it, I believe he was assisting Professor Windebank in that lecture series. 